Hi everyone, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. A couple of hours ago, Onyx Books had their presentation of two new products uh, for the 2020 lineup. With these two, it ends up with five new products that Onyx Books launched this year in the e-ink world, which is quite amazing. The year kick off with Nova 2, then we had Poke 2, then we had Poke 2 Color. Now we got two new products. So let's see what kind of information they've shared and what we can expect from these two devices. The first one is called uh, Max Lumi, and that's basically the next uh, iteration of their Max family of devices. As such, it has specifications that you would expect and some quite meaningful upgrades. At the core of it, it's a 13.3 inch e-ink display, which sports the same resolution and it's basically at 207 ppi. However, this time it is actually front lit. So this is a big deal for a lot of people who actually ask for that. I personally prefer the non-backlit, but okay. Uh, however, one of the consequences of having a backlit device is that it now sports a glass panel. So glass panel and the front light may equals for a thicker device and a heavier device. So while the original Max 3 was 6.8 millimeters thick, uh, Max Lumi is 7.9. It's 1.1 millimeter thicker than the previous Max 3. And it's also some 70 grams heavier than the Max 3. Apparently it took nine months and over a hundred prototypes to get the front light to work properly with the 13.3 inch design. So yeah, they will see how they've cracked it and how it actually works and how, if it's uniform or not, that's gonna be interesting to actually see. Upgrades don't stop at the front light. Uh, the Max Lumi is upgraded with a new CPU, which is an octa-core 2.4 gigahertz, so it's about a 30% bump, uh, and but it's more power efficient as well, and single core performance is a little bit higher as well. And also it has better memory bandwidth inside as an infrastructure. So it's using uh, same four gigabytes uh, amount of RAM, but it's using LPDDR4, uh, which has higher bandwidth and the storage while still at the 64 gigabytes of uh, storage space, non-expandable, I think. Uh, it also has um, better bandwidth and the end result should be in some cases of heavy documents what they've shown at least uh, responsiveness that's up to twice as fast. So that's going to be very interesting to actually check and see how that works on larger documents and heavier documents. The battery is pretty much the same capacity, 4,300 milliamps, but because the CPU and uh, RAM and all the electronics are updated, they are more efficient. So this time, uh, Max device, Max Lumi, should provide up to six weeks of standby time. And so far, Onyx books have been pretty much right on the dot as far as their claimed battery life and actual battery life goes. So if it pans out to be like that, that sounds pretty good too. One of the main things about Max 3 was that not only was a perfectly capable and a really, really powerful e-ink tablet, but it, it could also double as an e-ink monitor. And this time it's the same with Max Lumi, but it's front lit as well if you need it to be. So that I think is a huge plus as well. And they also say in the launch video that they've improved the latency with the um, uh, streaming of the video signal as well. So it should be about 25% more responsive when it works as an external monitor. Overall, the design looks really good because it's like a super exploded, really large poke too. So it has the black frame and then the nice little grayish type of color on the bottom. And yeah, of course it has a fingerprint sensor and everything else, everything else pretty much the same. But yeah, the front design and the edges have that metal. So it, it resembles the poke two family of the design. It sports Bluetooth 5.0, so that's something that's really cool for new peripherals that you might use for it. So yeah, wireless headphones and all that kind of stuff definitely can still use with Max Lumi. And of course it says that it supports USB OTG, but as we remember that one is spotty and really depends on what you're looking for and what type of USB hub you're having. So again, it's going to be interesting to see in the actual test uh, how that support is and has it been improved or not. Unfortunately, uh, the images show that it's still using the same old horrible black pen which has been present for Node 2, Nova 2 and updated Max 3 black design and 
I really don't understand why would you do that on your new flagship. I mean, why, 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 why? All of that package, the retail price is $880, which is very eye-watering and really, really high. Um, but I guess it has to be because it promises a lot and it delivers a lot. Because remember, you're getting a, pretty much the most powerful Android 10 uh, powered e-ink device that's 13.3 inches and it's front lit and it doubles as an e-ink monitor so yeah it only makes sense that it's gonna cost a lot but pretty much cost the same as max 3 did on its launch so no surprises there overall from the promo material and from the specifications data sheet it actually looks like that the best overall onyx books device has just been hump upgraded quite quite a bit and it promises to be a very exciting product Now the second product in their lineup that they've unveiled a couple of hours ago is called the Note Air. And this is a successor of their 10.3 inch uh, family of devices. No color display on Note Air either. However, this one is now branded to be the thinnest 10.3 e-ink uh, tablet with the front light and that is Android powered. So I think they had to kind of add quite a bit of those <laughs> to actually uh, categorize it so that it's true that it's thinnest, but if it has to go do do do. But still, let's cover it because it is an effort. Note 2 was around 7.1 millimeters thick and Note Air is actually considerably thinner at 5.8 millimeters. So yes, it most definitely is an achievement and uh, seeing how Remarkable 2's thinness also was an effect and the flatness and the rigidity and everything else had an effect on an overall use and perception of the device. I suspect that Note 2 or Note Air, sorry, is going to have a similar effect as well. It also has a dual front uh, light panel, but which is covered by a glass panel, which they say it's non-reflective, so that it can be used in sunlight. So I guess that's a good thing, but we'll see how non-reflective it is. However, bad thing for writing. And it's a glass panel on both Macs, Lumi and Note Air. So that's a trade-off for having a front light. More importantly, the whole design is completely new uh, for Onyx books as well. So uh, Note Air is a completely new beast. It looks totally different. It's no longer uh, symmetrical. It has that little side uh, handle, so to speak, that's already been seen on uh, Kobo H2O and on Kindle, now on Remarkable 2 as well. So now we have it on Note uh, Air as well. And I have to say that it looks really good. It's a one piece aluminum body, which means that it's super, super sturdy. There's no breaking points or anything like that. It's just a one unibody thing. It's a big, big deal. So it's a premium type of design. Um, and you have that flat 10.3 ink, ink display with the glass panel on top. Uh, the blue color is nice and it has some design on the back and all that kind of stuff. So I think it looks really good. And the unibody design I think is a really, really smart way to go because that ensures sturdiness and longevity of the device. One of the things that was problematic with Remarkable 2's design is that asymmetrical design thingy that you have uh, part on one side, which is wider. However, they seem to have, of course, overcame that because they designed a dedicated G sensor for uh, the Note Air, as they say. And basically that means that you can flip it over any way you want. So upside down, portrait, landscape, right-handed mode, left-handed mode, doesn't matter. The software actually is able to support that and it will just auto flip, orient and work as you would expect it to be. And that is a huge, huge plus. However, the design ingenuity doesn't stop there. Uh, Note Air is also designed so that the top and the bottom bezel is of equal width, which means that if you flip it over horizontal and you dock it into a keyboard station, for example, to use it as a 10.3 e ink display, uh, you have equal bezels on the side and on the top, which doesn't distract you at all. And it and basically becomes a ink laptop screen. And I think that's a huge, huge improvement and a very important part uh, of the design because it extends the use. It's not, uh, it's no longer a device that can be used as a screen, but it also is a screen because it's been designed with that in mind. I think that's a big plus as well.
Internally, it supports the same updates as Max Lumi, so we have the same updated octa-core uh, 2.4 gigahertz CPU with a 30% boost and better single-core performance and better battery life performance. We have 3 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and the same updated bandwidth of 32 gigabytes of storage. So we should expect pretty much the same performance out of uh, Max Lumi and Note 2. So same type of improvements should be present there as well. Unlike Max Lumi, Note Air has um, uh, the same resolution as before, which means that it's at 227 ppi as Note 2 was. So a little bit denser pixel density. And last but not least, certainly not least, this is a big, big deal for Onyx Books because finally, finally 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 we have a new pen and this new pen looks really good it looks like a proper uh, Stadler pencil uh, it's a hexagonal type of profile and it's ribbed so that you can actually hold it better no it doesn't have eraser and I didn't see if it has a button or not probably it does but they didn't mention it however it's also thinner and the nibs that it's using it's using new types of nibs that are much pointier and sharper so that means that you get a lot more precision out of the pen as they claim so that should be a very very cool update and it's magnetic as well so now it also snaps to the side what a shame that max lumi doesn't have that capability oh well but it's a huge plus for note air Note Air uh, retails at 480 US dollars and I think that's pretty much again the same price that Note 2 was retailing for. So I think that the amount of innovation and the design and all the stuff that's been put into Note Air makes it a really, really, really attractive prospect. So I can't wait to get my hands on that one and test it out to see if it lives up to the specs sheet and the build up that they've made with this release video. And finally, there's also another announcement, not a new device, but a brand new firmware, and that's a V3 firmware. That one is a big deal because it's not just a small uh, bump up, it definitely justifies bumping from two to three. First of all, it sports Android 10. Second of all, it introduces a system-wide split-screen functionality. So that uh, split-screen functionality that we had in Neo Reader, now you have it system-wide both on Max Lumi and on Note Air, and you can use built-in apps or third-party apps or both third-party apps or whatever you want, which I think is an amazing thing because it just explodes the uh, capabilities and usabilities of these devices. So it's a huge upgrade. Uh, compared to the version 2 that we have. They've also implemented a dedicated internet browser which has been optimized and designed to work with e-ink screens or e-ink devices. Something that I've been talking about that why third-party apps are not responsive and they don't work as well because they're not designed for an e-ink display device. This one seems to be and now it looks like that on both devices we're gonna have a dedicated internet browser that is optimized for e-ink display. It means it has a full screen mode, proper refresh management, uh, it has font change capabilities and it also has a side bar buttons so that you don't have to scroll but you can actually just jump down the page and scroll that way for easier navigation. So I think those are really really good things and I can't wait to actually try that out because uh, yeah it should prove to be a much much better overall user experience and a big improvement as well. They've also introduced something that they haven't covered too much they just mentioned it but it looks like that we have customizable system-wide gestures. Now don't ask me, I don't know what more, they just showed a couple of flips here and there that you can do this and do that, but from the sound of it, it sounds as if you can actually pre-program and customize a couple of gestures that will work system-wide and do some functions that you, whatever they may be. And if that's the case, that's that's a super awesome thing as well. I really, really am looking forward to testing this out. It's also possible to group apps. Um, so now you no longer have, you can actually organize your installed apps into grouping them into kind of subfolders, which is a really cool thing as well. But more importantly, both the Neo Reader and the Notes, ha Notes app have gotten considerable updates. Now for the Reader, the main update is uh, basically it now supports PowerPoint files. So you can just drag and drop PPT files into it and it should be able to handle them. That, 
in the context of Max 3 as an external monitor, as casting the screen and all that kind of stuff, that's a huge, huge productivity boost. So I'm hoping that it works properly. We'll have to actually test it out and see. But even just as a, a possibility of having that, uh, that gets me quite excited because that's something that would slot right into my productivity pipeline. However, Notes app has received really cool things, the long-awaited layers. So now we finally have layers and, as before, we had colors. So now this is a huge, huge thing for the Notes app and now it becomes even more usable type of experience for drawing, sketching and having notes as well. But they've also added two more brushes, total of five now, but the two brushes are the uh, marker and the pencil brush. So the graphite pencil, which is pressure sensitive, not angle sensitive, that's still just remarkable, but pressure sensitive. And from the sketches and that I've seen on the screen, it looks interesting and it looks promising. But however, for these brushes, you just have to use them and see what's what and how they actually perform in real life. However, even the prospect of having these updates is very, very cool. And finally, the notes uh, management, page management system has also been updated completely. So now you're able to uh, relocate, delete, move pages and copy or move pages from one notebook to another notebook all within the same interface. You don't have to go outside or anything. You can just flip um, yeah, from which notebook to which notebook you want to go. And that's a nice improvement, I think, as well. Um, we'll see how it works in reality, but again, a promising thing there as well. So overall, I think that this sounds awesome. I think that the products look very promising. I'm very disappointed that Max Lumi does not have a new pen. That's just why, but okay, whatever, because the new pen actually looks pretty cool. So both products look really good. While Max Lumi looks like an incremental generational update, Note Air looks like a brand new thing, like a leap. So I'm very, very interested to actually check those two and since it's September 21, now I can actually tell you, uh, Onyx Books has contacted me and I will be getting both of the devices as review samples to actually review. First, it's going to be Max Lumi. I'm going to be receiving it, I think, next week and I'll be able to start testing it and then bring you a review as quickly as I can. And after that, shortly after that, I hope, is going to be also the Note Air. So lots of goodies coming up on my deep guide. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and hit the ding dong button so that you can get notifications about the new videos that are coming up. Thank you so much for the support. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.